The universe of Frank Herbert's Dune presents a complex web of political machinations, where power is often wielded by individuals with ulterior motives and calculated schemes. In this intricate dance of control and manipulation, young Paul Atreides finds himself facing an array of enemies, each presenting unique challenges that he must overcome in his journey to seek vengeance against those who conspired to destroy his family. In this video, I'd like to provide an overview of the villains of Frank Herbert's Dune and how they each served as antagonists to Paul Atreides. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune. Baron Vladimir Harkonnen is perhaps the most direct and immediate threat to Paul Atreides. The Baron is not only the archenemy of Paul's father, Duke Leto, but also a key figure in the betrayal that causes the downfall of House Atreides. He is a cunning and manipulative mastermind, known for his political acumen and ruthlessness in pursuing his ambitions. His sadistic tendencies, combined with his corpulent, grotesque physique, make him an imposing and unforgettable adversary. Paul's defeat of the Baron is more systemic, as he undermines the Baron's power base by aligning himself with the Fremen, the native inhabitants of Arrakis, who eventually help him reclaim his rightful position. Under Paul's guidance, the struggle for control of Arrakis leads to a significant disruption in the spice supply, compelling the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV to directly engage in the conflict. This intervention not only undermines Baron Harkonnen's influence, but also tarnishes his reputation for efficacy and control. By toppling the Harkonnen regime on Arrakis, Paul masterfully thwarts the Baron's intricate schemes to concentrate power through his nephew, Fade Rotha who had been positioned to emerge as a savior. In doing so, Paul not only orchestrates the Baron's undoing, but also elevates himself from a political pawn to a revered leader and liberator. Beast Raban, known for his brutal and sadistic rule, serves as the embodiment of cruelty and greed, hallmark qualities of House Harkonnen. His lack of finesse and diplomatic skills make him a stark contrast to most of the other antagonists of Dune, Rather than seeking to gain power through cunning or strategy, the beast remains focused on operating through the power of sheer force and intimidation. Instead of pursuing his own path and ambitions, Raban is primarily driven by a desire to win his uncle's approval, executing the Baron's commands to the best of his limited abilities. Though he falls far short of matching the Baron's strategic acumen, Raban carries out his uncle's orders with a similar heartless ferocity. After the fall of House Atreides, the Baron's brutish nephew serves as the oppressive governor of Arrakis. Paul defeats Raban not through direct confrontation, but rather by inspiring and leading the Fremen who have long despised Raban's tyrannical rule. As the Fremen forces grow stronger, Raban's brutal governance serves as a catalyst, intensifying their fervor to overthrow him. This momentum enables the Fremen to unite and successfully reclaim control of Arrakis from the clutches of the Harkonnens. Fade Rotha, the Baron's other nephew, is a more nuanced character. Unlike Raban, Fade Rotha is cunning, attractive, and charismatic. His lethal prowess in gladiatorial combat and his ambition for power makes him a complex adversary, one capable of both charm and ruthlessness in his pursuit of control. In a stark contrast to Raban's loyalty, Fade Rotha harbors sinister ambitions to usurp his uncle and actively engages in schemes to assassinate the Baron. Even after the Baron becomes aware of his nephew's treachery, Fade remains his favored heir Fade Rotha is also in a way a distorted mirror image of Paul, being a young man placed in great responsibility and expectation. When Paul faces off against Fade Rotha in ritualistic combat, it represents his most direct confrontation with any of the primary antagonists in the Dune Saga. Unlike his struggles against other villains, which often involve intricate political maneuvering or indirect undermining through allies, Paul's duel with Fade is a raw, personal clash of honor versus treachery, serving as a defining moment for both characters. Emperor Shaddam IV is a more distant yet exceedingly influential adversary for Paul. Shaddam is a shrewd and calculating ruler, obsessed with maintaining the power and influence of House Carino over the known universe. 
compounded by his advancing age and the absence of male heirs, the Emperor's growing desperation is further fueled by his envy of Duke Leto's rising popularity. This acute sense of urgency drives him to Machiavellian extremes, culminating in the covert orchestration of House Atreides' downfall to safeguard his own tenuous grip on the Imperial throne. The Emperor's role in the betrayal of House Atreides makes him a key villain in Paul's life. Paul employs two principal strategies to undermine and ultimately dethrone the Emperor. First, by training the Fremen in the weirding way, he elevates them from being formidable to virtually invincible. This transformation directly challenges the supremacy of the Emperor's elite Sardaukar troops, who had been his primary means of enforcing control. Their defeat significantly erodes the Emperor's power base. Second, Paul gains control over the production and distribution of the Spice Melange, the most valuable resource in the universe found exclusively on Arrakis. By leveraging this control, he amasses enough political capital to force a change in imperial leadership, relegating Shaddam IV to the margins of power. Within the inner circle of Emperor Shaddam's court resides Count Hasimir Fenring and his wife, Lady Margot, two enigmatic figures who wield their influence from the shadows. They represent a complex blend of allegiances, both to the Emperor and to the secretive Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. While both institutions vie for power, it is the Bene Gesserit agenda that holds the highest priority for the Fenrings. The Fenring's intricate web of loyalties places them in a unique relationship with Paul Atreides, while Emperor Shaddam IV seeks to quash the rising Fremen insurgency led by Paul, Count Fenring and Lady Margot take measures to protect him. Lady Margot even leaves a coded message for Paul's mother, Lady Jessica, in an effort to help protect her and her son. Margot also implants a trigger word in Fade Rotha that would enable Paul to incapacitate him. However, their actions are not motivated by a genuine concern for Paul's well-being. Instead, they are aligned with the Bene Gesserit's long-standing breeding program and their overarching agenda to manipulate genetic lines for their own ends. So while the Fenrings may appear to be guarding Paul against immediate danger, their ultimate goal is to manipulate him into a role that furthers not his own objectives, but those of the Bene Gesserit. Count Fenring is also a product of the Bene Gesserit breeding program and is a failed Kwisatz Haderach himself, a fact that adds layers of complexity to his relationship with Paul. Paul recognizes the Count as a shadow of a possibility, a man who could have been what Paul becomes. In the end, the Count chooses not to assassinate Paul when given the opportunity, as though recognizing a kindred spirit. In a position of greater leadership within the Sisterhood is the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim, who exudes an aura of stern authority, making her an intimidating presence to both allies and adversaries alike. She possesses an unparalleled mastery of psychological and physiological control. This grants her skills which she employs in service to the Emperor as his truthsayer, and to clandestinely probe and influence those who stand in the way of the Bene Gesserit's intricate plans. While the Reverend Mother Mohayim may not fit the traditional mold of a villain, her treatment of Paul as a mere pawn in the Bene Gesserit's elaborate genetic and political machinations positions her as an antagonist in his story. Paul resists their attempts to control him, refusing to hand them any responsibility for his victory in his duel with Phaedrotha, deliberately refraining from utilizing the specialized skills imparted through his Bene Gesserit training, and ignoring the trigger word implanted in Fade by Lady Margot Fenring. Paul's ultimate defiance of the Bene Gesserit's grand schemes, culminating in his ascent to a level of power beyond their control, serves as his triumph over the manipulative influence embodied by Mohayim. Each antagonist to Paul Atreides has their own unique set of motivations, allegiances, and objectives. As striking as these characters are, it is Paul's own ascent to power that most compellingly blurs the lines between hero and villain. Rising through the ranks to become a leader of nearly mythic proportions, Paul eventually shoulders a destiny that makes him, paradoxically, the Imperium's most devastating villain to date. His very rise to messianic status sets off a cataclysmic chain of events, leading to wars waged in his name and causing suffering on an unprecedented scale. 
In realizing his destiny, Paul becomes a tragic figure, embodying the hazards of unchecked power and becoming, in a profound sense, a villain both to the larger universe and, most painfully, to himself. But I'm curious to know what you think about the main antagonist of Frank Herbert's Dune. Which villain's motives or actions do you find most compelling and why? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And if you're looking for other ways to show your appreciation, you can check out my Patreon page where members get access to exclusive perks. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.